DeLuna Coffee is owned and operated by diehard Florida State fans and boosters, the Lemmix family in Pensacola. So cut them some slack for their hurricane blend. No green and orange, and it's definitely not all about some random letter in the alphabet. It simply is a blend for those of you who love that strong coffee flavor without bitterness. DeLuna has combined two different South American beans with a Hawaiian bean. In fact, the Hurricane Blend has won as many ACC titles as the school in Coral Gables. Try it or one of their other two dozen blends and get a discount when you use the promo code WARCHANT15. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closes only. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. DeLunaCoffee.com. Come explore our world of coffee. Shout out to our guys, uh, Ed, Brett, our lady, the first lady of DeLuna Coffee. Courtney, they're back on the shelves here in Tallahassee, so at Publix. So if you're from the Panhandle to about I-4, check out your local Publix. You'll be able, if you don't want to wait for it to get shipped to you, go to your Publix. You can get yourself some DeLuna Coffee, or you go to DeLunaCoffee.com. Use that promo code WARCHANT15. WARCHANT.com, ultimate seminal sports source. We have a YouTube channel called WARCHANT TV. Oh, and don't forget, 6 p.m. tonight, folks, live on YouTube Second episode of Trench Talk. That's the live Q&A. We take all your questions and pitch them to offensive lineman Devontae Love-Taylor. Again, that's 6 p.m. Trench Talk live on YouTube on Monday. Shout out to Octavio, Corey. He's the guy that's been on some of our live chats, and he's like, I keep hearing you guys talking about War Chant TV. Is that like a real thing? You want me to help you launch it? And I'm like, I, I, I guess, sure. So I gave him some information. So maybe we'll actually be a functioning television station somehow, or at least, you know, on an app. Perhaps. How are you, Corey? Maybe we could be on like uh, Xfinity, like the ACC network, Look at that. apparently. 1322 in Tallahassee, y'all. It says SEC alternate channel, but no, it is the Bring Your A Game conference channel now. It's the ACC network's on Xfinity in Tallahassee. Rejoice, everybody. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's something up with my. I, I think I have the old Xfinity. Like I never got the new um, cable box, the receiver. Okay. So it's not letting me go to 1322. Uh, so that's a little disappointing. Uh, but what am I really missing? You know what I mean? Uh, you'll tell me if anything good's on the ACC network. But Dude, on doing... my archaic cable from Xfinity, I still can't get it. They're doing a, a road trip. They're doing a road trip. They were in Raleigh hanging out with Dave Dorn and the Wolfpack. Now they're in Raleigh, or I'm sorry, Durham hanging out with uh, David Cutcliffe and the folks mm. from Duke doing little tours okay. of each uh, campus and football facility. NC State actually sneaky has a pretty nice facility, but their their dining area is quite funny. The the guy who's like, oh, and this is where we eat, and it's just it's a nicely sort of uh, outfitted room, but it's small. It's just literally it was just two rectangular tables with a couple of those buffet chafers, and that mm. was it. Like you can't even eat in there. It's like yeah, there's usually a line coming out here. We grab our food, one on this line, one on that line. It's like. Well, so this really isn't your, I mean, I guess it's your cafeteria, but you don't eat in your, it's just. You don't get to eat there. Yeah. Well, hey, man, so. there's other things going for NC State, not just their, uh, I guess not their cafeteria. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel. Plenty of content on there. Freshmen, they're uh, starting to flash. Tom Lang, Irish Ophel, talking about which freshmen you possibly could expect to see do some damage, do some contributions for Florida State in 2021. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the thumbs up. Five-star review rating. All that good stuff on your iOS device. Let's talk about a freshman. His name keeps popping up, man. Shaheem Brown. I'm I'm always hesitant to gas up freshmen, uh, but he keeps making plays. Operation Takeaway. You can't spell it without Shaheem Brown. I mean, you probably can, but you get what I'm saying, right? So he had a, uh, yeah, so they scrimmaged on Sunday night. Um, we were not really, not a lot of information to uh, discern from the, the post-scrimmage interviews, which is fine. Again, we get to watch every practice. We just don't get to watch the scrimmages. So, you know, no quarterbacks were mentioned by name. So if you're wondering who had the better day, forget it. Um, you know, a couple of the receivers were mentioned. Parchment had a touchdown, apparently, but also had a drop. The drop came before the touchdown, so that was nice. 
Uh, I think it was Norvell. It might have been Dillingham, but I think it was Norvell that talked about parchment. I'll get to Shaheem Brown. Shaheem, I'm coming for you, buddy. Just give me a second. Um, it's a roundabout way of getting to you. Um, he talked about, I think it was Norvell talked about parchment, how yes. he had a drop and kind of hung his head. And then he came back and had a touchdown. And that's one thing uh, that I've noticed about parchment that, that if there's one thing that gives me pause, it does seem that when he makes a mistake or doesn't make the catch or something happens, he can get, he get a little hang dog to him and it's like man you you know that that, that again that stuff might fly in lord's kansas buddy but your norvell's not going to let you do that um dillingham's not going to let you do that so you hope he can you, hopefully what happened on sunday night was a big moment for him to have a a bad moment like a drop a critical drop apparently and then to come back and have a touchdown pass you hope maybe can be the start of something for him because he will be important to this team i think he's again he's the, he's got more accolades than anybody this whole receiving crew put together so you hope he can find it and not let uh his own you know just to his own i'll say uh, i'll go ahead and say i mean for a guy who's from delray beach Ended up in Northern Illinois, then in JUCO, then Lawrence, Kansas, and now playing at Florida State. You would, you would, see, I, I, don't, I would assume that we'd have seen a much more chipper, uh, just peppy young man. But maybe that's not his way. Maybe he is just low key and very introverted. But I'm, I, I have been surprised to see him not nearly as I would think outwardly exuberant about the opportunity ahead of him. Doesn't mean he doesn't grasp the gravity of it, but it just. Uh, well, so I think it maybe really speak what I thought it was. Yeah, I was going to say, but I feel like because his first day when he made those really good catches in the uh, in the IPF uh, when he was with the second unit for that one day, and he like banged the football on the garage the garage door after making a really good back shoulder catch and getting both feet down. He was really excited about that catch, and they were all excited for him. So you know, I I think he just he he maybe he's putting a little too much pressure on himself. Uh, maybe he's getting a little too down on himself, and and because it is his last year and and he, but he's got to get through he's got to fight through that and become a player for this 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 offense needs him um, so anyway so um that was a good sign i thought that he had a moment like that uh, after after not having a good moment early in the scrimmage and coming back and making the catch and then um you know them talking about Shaheen Brown again the guy had another interception on sunday night and i i mean i i've lost track i think that might be six that he's had this august five or six that he's had this August, including two in one day, you know, that, you know, I know there was the spring a couple of years ago where like Jaleel McCray kept intercepting passes and now where's Jaleel. But I, I think this is different, man. I, this isn't normal for a kid, a kind of unheralded kid um, th that wasn't recruited heavily by a lot of people to come in and make the, all of these plays two weeks into his college career. Cause he wasn't here for the spring. Was he? No. Yeah, that, I mean, this is kind of nuts, right? Like, Kevin Knowles, again, Mike Norvell brought him up. Uh, so did Adam Fuller, actually. He had another good scrimmage, apparently, and just continues to be good. He's just a good player, it would appear. Um, uh, but but for, for, for Knowles to do it with a whole spring is one thing. This kid is coming out of, you know, he, he wasn't on campus in the spring. He's been practicing with this group for two weeks, and he's made at least five interceptions and maybe six. That's good. And... He's kind of also almost known more, or, or we he was he was pitched to us more as like a physical guy, like a, a guy that that is going to help out in the run game and is really physical at the you know coming downhill. But he's apparently got some ball skills because he intercepts a pass every day. So it'll be interesting. Again, I'm not predicting him to start. I'm not predicting him to even get eight reps against Notre Dame. But man, it it sure seems like the future is pretty bright in the secondary when you're talking about uh, Kevin Knowles and and Shaheen Brown doing what they're doing as true freshmen. Let's keep it in the secondary then. Uh, lots of questions to Adam Fuller after practice about Travis J. I thought, if I could pull out my Ira Schofield body language card, I feel like Kenny and Mike feel a lot better about their offense than Adam feels about his defense, at least on Sunday night at 930. And who knows, maybe he was just tired. He could be tired. It was late night. I get it. Um, I think there's a, we were, there's a lot of like, hey, well, how's Travis J looking? Like He's got to be doing really good now. Huh? How's it all coming together? And it was like, yeah, he's doing good. Yeah, there was there's no there's like no glowing endorsement of Travis. But then when I asked him later on, he seemed to have kind of opened up a little bit more. So Travis has been a cornerback. Um, we can say that now. Uh, yes. He, he, you know, we, we're not supposed to talk about depth charts, positions, all that kind of stuff. But he came out and said they've been working him sort of exclusively at cornerback because they feel he's one of their more competitive 
players, and that's who you. That's the, an attribute you need to have if you're going to be in one-on-one situations playing defensive football. So um, Travis Jay is a guy that he says has kind of uh, you know been improving. So maybe that's that answers maybe some of the questions that we have, or at least I had when it comes to man. We've got a lot of safeties out there, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of pure cornerbacks, cover guys. Um, but they they seem to like what Travis Jay is doing, so that's encouraging. Yeah, and he is, you know, as Adam Fuller said, you want your guys that are competitive and athletic at the cornerback position. I, I think Knowles has proven he's a competitive dude, and Travis J, uh, I think, oozes competitiveness and certainly athleticism, and then so does uh, Brownlee. So, okay, you feel pretty good about those three. You'd like to know what you have with Jarian and Jones and, and, uh, and Miko Dotson. Um, cause you are a little thin at the cornerback spot, but I, I think, you know, his size six, one, whatever he is, he can run a little bit, uh, or you can run a lot actually. Uh, th- I think Travis J might have a chance to be a, a good cornerback for sure. And, but yeah, I think, you know, look, I, we can read into that what we want. Adam Fuller wasn't really high on anyone on Sunday night when he was talking. So, yeah. it, it wasn't like he was, he was, he talked glowingly about three other kids and then was like, but you know, Travis J was okay. He was like that with everyone. DJ Lind, other than like Kalen Deloach. Kalen Deloach, he's like, has probably take, made the biggest strides from this time last year till now, or the and, end of last season till now. And not to be that guy, I think that's relatively speaking, too. It's not exactly to right. Yes. It, it wasn't like he's one. a superstar. Yeah. yeah. Um, even like um, Dennis Briggs, that was, a, that was, I thought, maybe the most unique part of the whole post scrimmage interview. Was it last week when Norvell talked about our man, uh, the kid from Louisville, the yeah, transfer? The X Factor, Jared Jackson. Yeah, Jared Jackson, and how he's going to be important. Well, well, Fuller threw down an even bigger hammer, a bigger gauntlet for Dennis Briggs and said he has to play at a high level for them to be a good defense. <laughs> so yeah. g- make it happen, DBJ. But that I think that's what... They they are really excited about him. Apparently, that you know, he said he's grown into that role. That is his role. That's what he was born to play. He's got the long arms and athleticism, but inside he 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 uh, he is disruptive. You know, I know he's played outside, but that he really likes him inside and thinks he can be a, fo- a force inside. And I you know I think there's a really good chance Briggs starts uh, as a defensive tackle. But either way, he's gonna it really won't matter. He's gonna play a lot along with Cooper and Lovett. And they would like to get that fourth guy, which I guess they would like to be Jared uh, Jackson at this point. But either way, he talked. He didn't even talk glowingly about Briggs. Just kind of talk. It was more of a challenge. Like this is what you've got to do. But as far as like you know, Kushney, he said some okay things about. So for okay, you, you guys might not know this because you might be listening to this early in the morning. You haven't been on the War Chance site, but they held out that we don't know who. We didn't get the names, but they held out some pretty prominent players from the defensive front. They did not scrimmage on Sunday. Some, I guess, you know, Fuller said some of it was because they were banged and bruised. Some of it's because some guys already locked into their positions. And they're trying to get other guys. That's kind of what Norvell said, is they're trying to get other guys reps, needed reps, to try to build some depth and to see what the depth chart should be. Uh, because, you, I mean, you know who you're, you, you probably know who your front four is up front. At least you're starting six. Like your, your, front, your first five or six, you know who they are. I don't know that you need Jermaine Johnson taking 35 snaps in a scrimmage two weeks out from Notre Dame. You know what he is. So you get the other guys involved. You get the other guys a chance. So, you know, with that being said, he didn't say a ton of great things about anyone, really. Did like uh, Fabian Lovett. He says Fabian Lovett's in the best shape since he's been here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also a guy that's taken ownership. I don't know if he said leadership or ownership of the front four, so – Ownership. Um, yeah, that yeah. was the word he used, ownership. Yeah. And, and he's one of the guys that got a, got a shot on the – stone after uh, preseason workouts in the gym so uh, that's that's good to see that confluence of uh, good stuff happening for Fabian Lovett and that's another, that's a guy that I heard one of the support staff guys pointing out to a scout either on Friday or Saturday when he was uh, you know roaming the silence like hey zero that's Lovett and they also point out Briggs and he also pointed yeah. out Jordan Wilson uh, everyone's favorite tight end so that's that Hey, let's not. I want to do. I do want to get back to wide receivers because I feel like we asked about that a lot. A lot of that's a product that we're not all that comfortable asking about the quarterback situation because the coaching staff really isn't all that comfortable talking about the quarterback situation. Right. So, and they will not be until literally till we talk to them after the game against Notre Dame. But yeah, just yeah, right. folks, if you want to know who the starting quarterback is, I, I I would be surprised at this point if they tell us I agree. Um, who who it will be. But if they do, it will be the week of the game. 
And I would guess that, uh, you know, I just, I won't even finish that sentence. Just don't expect over. And I love, hey, God bless Gene. He tries. Um, but, you know, you, Norvell even started laughing with Gene on Sunday night where he's like, are you any closer to Damon as starting quarterback? And Mike Norvell was like, that's a great question, Gene. Um, we We're are watching closer. practice every day. Yeah. Um, and that was basically the answer. So there, there, there's no point in them. There, there's no reason to name the, the start. And you asked a question that wasn't even the question that Dillingham thought you were asking, but he still answered it as we're, we're, you know, we're one getting day closer, closer and closer to naming one, right, one, one day, day closer, closer to naming one. Yeah. So it's not happening. You're not, we're not going to know who the starting quarterback is because they don't want Notre Dame to know who the starting quarterback is until right after kickoff, most likely. Yeah. I would say at this point, I mean, you just said, I totally agree. I don't, I don't want to make, I don't know if I want you to, to reemphasize it, but, I don't think we're going to know before kickoff. No, I, yeah, I, I, w- I would be surprised uh, if, if that happens. Uh, it just seems like that's the direction it's going, which is fine. But, yeah, when, when you talk about the receivers, because th- we, we do ask a lot about the receivers, because, you know, we're not, we're not going to get any good answers out of the uh, – he's never going to – they aren't going to come out and say, man, Jordan Travis had a great day. They oh, would. Holy moly. They wouldn't if we look. asked them. They would, though. I think they'll come out and volunteer stuff. They're, ah, man, they're not going to answer questions, we but ask. we still have to ask, though. I mean, we really yeah. do. We really do. And listen, like, I don't want to be the bad guy. I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I don't think I'm being a bad guy. I'm going to ask every time we talk to Norville, I'll, have to, I'll ask something quarterback related because I remember what it's like when Jimbo was flirting with other schools, when Matthew Thomas wasn't priced before the Alabama game, and I would check out any update, and I'm like, why the hell are they not being asked about this? And I understand Mike Norvell doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to answer it. It's almost a fool's errand to ask him. And then right. at some hey, point, it's fine, though. Do and then it. at some point, you're like, well, why are you doing it then, Aslan? Or why are you doing it, media? Like, why are you being a jerk? It's like, well, hey, man, you all want to know. And listen, I'm still part of me. is I got a little bit of vested interest. I, I still love this program. I still root for this team deep down in the cackles of this black soul thorax of mine. Mm. I want to kind of know. Um, yeah. But it, what I will say for them, and I'm not much of a Mike Norvell apologist, I don't think. Like, there's a legitimate reason to not reveal it. Like, when you're talking about Bailey Hockman, DeAndre Francois, and James Blackman, and you're trying to be all secretive about that, that's kind of like, well, okay, I guess. I understand you want to make everybody feel like they're involved in this process. But there, there, is going to be a leg- there would be a legitimate difference for Notre Dame's defensive preparation yes. if they knew who their starting quarterback is going to be. So I, yeah. I understand that. And when you're a 10-point dog at home, or I guess it's seven and a half points now, you're, you're, you're able to do that. You know, I'm, I hope in the next week and a half or whatever, we're, we're Antonio Cromartie days away, uh, Corey Clark. Antonio Cromartie days away. Danny Cannell days away. Uh, from I'm going to go with Snoop Menace days away. Okay, strong. Uh, I think strong. I'm going to go with Snoop. Snoop's a friend of the war chant. He, he did a war chat last year about the uh, the 99 Florida game. Had that great season in, uh, in, in 2000. We're not going to mention how it ended, but he had a great regular season in uh, the year 2000. So, yeah, I'm going to go Snoop Menace days away. Uh, That's forget- crazy. We're less than two weeks. How I know about that. I know. So they can they can hide it. I get it. Uh, I'm not going to be happy about it, but I'm not going to be I'm not going to be sourpuss about it either. I, I, yeah, I, but I, this one you understand. It's not like uh, who's going to start. Uh, you know, Sean McGuire or Clint Trickett. Like it's the same dude in the same system. This this and I know they never competed against each other. Really, I just I, that was just a comparison I made. These guys are so different with with their skill sets. Uh, one of them in particular in the way he can run, it, it it does change a lot of how you try to defend something. This isn't, okay, is it going to be uh, Jameis or Ponder? I mean, the offense is the offense. Or, I'm sorry, EJ or Ponder. Mm. The offense is the offense. They're both they're both athletic. They both run. It's, the, it's really the same offense. This is, this is a little different than that. So I get it. But on that same token, so I wasn't at practice Saturday, but I was talking to Ira, and I think you would agree, it sounds like, that the offense – is starting to make a few more plays downfield. It's starting to look, things are starting to open up more, um, which is a good sign. Um, no matter who's playing quarterback, maybe not a great sign if you want the defense to keep improving, but it's a good sign for the offense that after about two weeks, about a week and a half, it seems to have found itself a little bit. It isn't just getting completely obliterated um, every 11 on 11. Yeah. Uh, Chuba had a really nice drive on Saturday, a big gain. 
Uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Darian Williamson, right? Williamson, didn't he hit Williamson? Our man yeah, there you go. Up? Thank you, yeah. thank you, man. Way to way to way to, way to help me out there. Way to pick me up. Yeah, you got it. That yeah, was a really nice drive. Uh, I think some good runs with DJ Williams, and they ended, they punched it in too. So it was it was pretty bang bang bang. It looked like those drives they put against North Carolina. A lot of the drives that we saw from them last season, first opening drive of a of each half. So, and listen, yeah, your defense could be ahead of the offense this time of year. We're two weeks into camp now. Offense is able to catch up. You want your offense yeah. to catch up. Uh, they're starting to do that. It would be nice if we would maybe see 10 and 13 out there doing it, but you'll take what you can get. There's the guys that are making the plays, not necessarily the quarterback, but the offensive line that's making time and creating time. Those are the guys that are going to probably be starting. And I think a guy like Darren Williamson's probably in the mix to contribute. DJ Williams is probably in the mix to contribute. So even if it's not the quarterback at the controls that you think is going to start, the guys around him are going to be out there and they're starting to, to kind of perform at a high level. And I, th- I think Jordan have I think Jordan Jordan had a really good drive too, or maybe it was McKenzie. I can't even keep up with everything that's going on now. But I know that one of the guys had a really good closeout eleven on eleven after we showed them maybe being a little bit shaky in the first eleven on eleven of the day. Which again, mm. everybody, don't forget when you're watching these videos from practice. Which programming note, uh, we're no longer going to be allowed to film practice. We're still going to be allowed out there and watch it the entire way. Uh, but as we enter this sort of game week mode that they're getting into, they're no longer going to allow us to film or photograph the first 15 minutes. So I guess what you did see, you have to remember, man, that every, it's a f- periods are four minutes long. They give us three periods to shoot, and it's a 24-period long practice. So don't panic. Don't try to extrapolate anything out of what you've seen in those first few periods as to what you think this team is going to look like on September 5th. So just, just know that. But to Corey's point, talking to Ira, accurate offense is slowly starting to kind of uh tick along here some of the notes i kept i don't know if i have saturday notes but i know from friday's uh, scrimmage parchment did have a touchdown in red zone everybody friday's likes practice friday's practice friday's sorry. practice you mean sorry thank yeah. you yeah thank you um marquise and douglas is a guy who's kind of been out there catching plays or catching passes making plays down the seams not sorry to did spill. Dilly, did, did dillingham call yeah. him biscuit Something like that. He's like Keiston. Yeah, I gave him, I gave him a nickname. Oh, he said Keiston. I thought he called him Biscuit. I don't know, maybe maybe he said Biscuit before he said Keiston, but he gave Mark Keiston Douglas a shout out. He's lumbering out there. That's a good nickname for it's a good nickname for someone that used to be a little bit heavy. They just call him Biscuit. Probably because he's probably a biscuit away from being an offensive lineman. <laughs> maybe that's why they call you know, him that. So. Yeah, but he's he's noticeably like look when he was in in the spring he looked like a a tackle. I mean, you, you look at, I mean, they got a million tight ends anyway, but you look at that guy and you're like, what, what are you doing, man? Like you, if this is, if this is the shape you're going to be in, you're never going to play tight end. You're, you're a glorified tackle. You might as well move to tackle just like Jalen Goss might as well move to tight end. But, uh, but yeah, Mark, I mean, I would say he's down 30 pounds since the spring. I mean, he can move a little bit more. He's, he's still the biggest tight end they got. May. Thickness wise, yes. uh, Jordan Wilson's probably weighs the most because he's he's a little bit. I mean, Jordan Wilson's a, just a a monster of a human being. He is enormous. But Marcus and Douglas, Marquiston Douglas, is a big dude too, and he he can move a little bit now. In the spring, you're like, man, what what's going on here? But he seen, yeah, he's he's righted the ship a little bit. And Dillingham was asked about the tight end position in general on Sunday night after the scrimmage, and the only name he mentioned was Biscuit. So. We'll see. Well, I mean, I, again, I don't expect Biscuit Marquiston to be playing a ton, especially early in the season. But that's a, another good, you know, maybe he's maybe he'll be the real deal, too. The clutch shot, the biggest hit. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. All right. So the NFL has released their top 100 for 2021. Uh, the top 10, by the way, Corey's got more guys from the Mountain West Conference than the SEC. So put that in your pocket, mm. smoke it, everybody. Uh, let's talk about who's Who? exactly indescribable. Josh Allen? Josh Allen, one of them? Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. And then Devontae Adams, who uh, went to Fresno. So, How about that guy? That guy's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. That's not what this, no, this no. Uh, segment is about. It's uh, Zaxby's indescribably good Florida State player currently in the NFL. There's two Knowles in the top 100. They're actually in the top 20. Dalvin Cook, 20th, and then 13th, Jalen Ramsey. So, Corey Clark, who do you think is a Zaxby's indescribably good Florida State player currently in the NFL? 
Yeah, I'll go with Dalvin, although I want to give a special shout-out, honorable mention to my man Rodney Hudson. Mm. We could not find him on the list, which is a travesty to the list. That guy's incredible. He should be a Hall of Famer. He's an all-pro every year and the best center in the league. It's crazy that they don't uh, value that position, I guess. Um, And then also Derwin James, I think, would be very high on this list if he could stay healthy. But anyway, let's get to the the two guys, and and I'll go with Dalvin Cook. Um, Look, he... It's, it is, um, I will never understand, other than the negative publicity that Florida State was getting at the time, but that still doesn't make sense because Jameis won it. Why Dalvin Cook was never even a Heisman finalist. I just don't understand it. I, I think most people that watched Florida State play and watched Dalvin Cook play thought, my God, he's the best player in the country. I can guarantee you Clemson defenders thought that. And I, I, so I, I've never understood why he didn't get more. I voted for him uh, both years that he was a, a, a ju- sophomore and junior. I voted for him uh, for the Heisman. I don't think I voted him number one. I think I, yeah, I voted Lamar Jackson number one in 16. I think I voted Dalvin second. I might have voted him number one in 15. I mean, if you look at those numbers, Asla, just an incredible player. We'll never forget running for over 200 yards with all that crazy sand flipping up behind him on, <laughs> on one hamstring, yeah. one good hamstring against Miami. So, I, you know, best running back in Florida State history, one of the best players in Florida State history, and currently showing all those dumb NFL scouts why they're so dumb. I'll then say the fact, I'll go Jalen Ramsey. Jalen's just, you know, hmm. just because just Jalen's crazy, man. I think Jalen and I would probably get along. Jalen, if you want a party from ever in L.A., let me look you up, man. Highest rated cornerback on this top 100 and he allowed fewer than 25 receiving yards in 11 of the games last season. So those are our Zaxby's indescribably good Florida State players currently in the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, uh, do we count preseason, Corey? Shout out Josh Kando. Got his first uh, career sack. I think mm, first no, sack since no, 2019. Nope. Well, yes, that's or 2018, true. 2018, I don't know. 2018, maybe. Delaware, maybe. maybe Delaware yeah. State. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't think we count it as a career sack since it's not an actual NFL game, but good for him. Um, hope he makes that team. Hope he has a great NFL career. Anybody else do anything? Uh, I know Derwin, I don't know if Derwin had a pick. I think Asante had Asante a pick. Asante had game. a pick six against the uh, Niners. Yeah, uh, but I think Derwin had one in a practice. He did. Uh, he did. Uh, it, it, I, man, that's crazy what the NFL does, man. Like, do they really need to go practice against other teams? Like, is why it the they NFL do doing it? I don't know. Is that the NFL making them, or do they do they think iron sharpens iron, and that's what they're trying to get done? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, playing... I, I don't think the NFL would make them do that, but the most, almost all of them do it, and it always inevitably leads to a bunch of fights. fights. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, they're not your teammates. You don't have to respect them trying to get better too. They they they're just out to kill you, and you don't want to be killed, and so it always ends in scrapes. It's real, and like it just doesn't seem like. For the health of some of your players, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. How about, um, instead, of because, going to, how about instead of going to Jacksonville, we go to Valdosta and we have Kirby bring his boys down and we have a, we have a joint scrimmage, joint right. practice. And then you just, uh, and then you just tell – it's just crazy because some of these teams will play each other in the regular season. Like, why wouldn't the Cowboys just dive at uh, the quarterback's knees? Like, the, well, because oh, there's he's a wearing code. a green they're, jersey. They're not going to hurt so, him. There's, a, there's still a code. They're no one. I each mean, other. I don't know, man. Is there really a code anymore? If I'm coaching, there's not a code. If y'all are dumb <laughs> enough to want to practice against my team to sharpen iron to get better, all right. Last play of the scrimmage, we're diving at knees. That's how Corey Clark. Until we get through this, uh, this weird. I mean, did they do this in the '60s and '80s? Are you? Do you take a page from the Greg Schiano playbook? Like when when the other team has won the game and they're kneeling on the ball, are you still gonna have your guys diving at knees when they're kneeling on it? No, no. I would have all Not my guys game. take a knee too. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, something you never see. You never see the defender. They just stand up. Right. Why don't they all take a knee? <laughs> like we surrender. Be kind of cool. But yeah, just like surrendering. Uh, so yeah, that's all. That's always odd. But uh, but yeah, Derwin had a pick six in either a practice against another team or he against did. the Chargers yeah. themselves. But it it would be nice if he can stay healthy because Absolutely, man. Um, he really does have a chance to be an all timer. But you just wonder, man. You know, and again, it's not like he's he's uh you know he, it's not like he's not tough. These are just devastating injuries that he keeps suffering. That that it's what three of the last four years, right? If you go back to um. 16? Yes. Yeah, six, 16. So, yeah, 16, 18, not, and 20. Like, it's three of the last five years he's missed 
Uh, most are all of a full season. It's just a bummer. I hope he can stay healthy because he would be high on this list next year if he did. Yeah, I bet. You, I bet you Jimbo sleeps a little bit better at night knowing that they, you know, shut him down in sixteen. Because remember, there was a the whole thing they could, they could have either shaved his meniscus and had him come back, but that would have like maybe left him more susceptible to getting hurt down the road, or they could have sewn it, which would have been the the better, smart, prudent play for the long game. And they actually did that. That um, might have been that might have been one of the last times I made Jimbo laugh was in sixteen asking asking him if they would if they were going to if Derwin would get a medical red shirt. And he laughed and goes, Yeah, but it's not like he's gonna be here another two years, man. And I and I, but I said it jokingly and then he laughed right. back at me. But yeah, that was probably the last time he, he laughed at one of my questions. But yeah, I remember asking Derwin, um Back before the 16th season, mate. Yeah, before he got hurt. I asked him, uh, when did he know, like when he was growing I mean, he's a, just a freak of an athlete, just yeah. an incredible, like Jalen type athlete. And I asked him, like, when did you know you were a really good athlete? Like you were different than your friends. And he goes, I guess it's when I started jumping over cars. And I'm like, oh, what? And he goes, yeah, we would, me and my friends would jump over the hoods of cars or try to. And I was the only one that could consistently do it as like a 13-year-old. A and I'm like, were they driving at you? Polk County. And he baby. goes, no, no, they were parked. I'm like, oh, okay, but you would get a running start and jump over cars. And he, he said yes. So, kids, if you're listening to this, don't try that at home. You're not Derwin James. No. You're gonna, it's going to be like that milk crate challenge thing. You're all <laughs> going to fall on your faces and end up in the ER. So don't do that. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, Derwin's different, man. Derwin and Jalen are, I mean, they're two of the, you could say they're probably two of the five best athletes that have ever come through florida state Ooh, that's that's um I'm, i won't commit to that i won't commit to that but i like where I you're think at you i got like those you're two. Your brand you're staying on brand you're still speaking I, I, all these for years some later. reason i think they're all i think they're all um probably dbs like dion obviously is one cromarty's got to be one uh jalen and derwin and then you know i'm i, I still know, think I'm sure basketball players Burrows. are the best athletes like as as great as we all and the esteem that we give Deion Sanders, if you saw Deion trying to dribble a basketball and he couldn't, wouldn't you totally just be deflated? Well, we like, yeah, oh. but we we know he could because he averaged like sixteen or eighteen in high school. Like he was a basketball player, and he did back then when they do the celebrity athlete stuff. Like the ABC would do the Wild World of Sports with right. the superstar athletes, and right. he would play basket. He would he would do in the dunk competition and. And, and stuff like that. So we know he could. But, yes, I, I do see. But that's more coordination than, like, uh, athleticism. Oh, um, like, I, I feel like, I mean, I, I would think every every DB on the Florida State roster can dunk. I don't know that every player on the Florida State basketball team can cover a wide receiver. But, yes, I, I, I do agree. Like, the, 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 the leaping ability, the, the, the – uh, they're, they're sinewy, sinewy, whatever that word is. Yeah, sinewy. That, uh, that basketball players are. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's different. But, man, Jalen – so I, that's another thing I remember about Jimbo was when – because Jalen – remember, Jalen was a, a, almost a long jump champion in, mm -hmm. in a national champion. He was, a nat, he was an All-American in the long jump at Florida State and wanted to run the 4 by one too, but just kind of concentrated on the long jump. And his coach, Dennis Nobles – um, longtime jumps coach at Florida State said that yeah he if he would have focused full time on long jumping he could have made a run at an, the Olympics like yeah. possibly made the Olympic team as a long jumper and this is a guy that coached some of the best to ever do it so um, that's the kind of athlete that Jalen was and then so I knew that already and then I was talking about I was talking with Jimbo about Derwin when Derwin was a freshman and I'm like so he's gonna be a pretty high pick too and he just smiled. And I go, he's, I, I say, he kind of reminds me of Jalen, but I don't, he's just probably not that, not as athletic. And he goes, Whoa, what? He goes, I'm, oh, and I was like, he is, he can run like that. And he's like, oh, Corey. Yeah. 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 So he was, you know, he, he just laughed at my ignorance, but yeah. So he said that Derwin was equal to Jalen, just a little bigger. So do with that what you will. I miss guys that were really awesome coming out of high Remember school. those days, Aslan, yeah. you know, like getting to ask Jimbo about, the next hot shot freshman and that he's going to be a, a future first round pick. And those were the days, buddy. Mm. They dried up there at the end. Let's be honest. But back then, back in that sweet spot of 13 and four. So but I hey, would say, but Hey, but we, we do have one. Um, did you see what Travis Hunter did this weekend? Did you so, see what yeah. Travis Hunter did yeah. this weekend? Yeah. Tell we him, need tell as him about many it, of these fun. guys that we possibly can like the, 
I would give up. I can't even tell you how many guys I would give up on this team right now. No, let's not for Travis mean. Hunter right now. I mean, I'm not going to name mean. names. I'm not going to name names. How many? How many? Co how many coaches? Oh. <laughs> it's a joke. How many of your? Uh, how many of your coworkers? Oh, none. I love you all, man. I could be. Nice I don't believe that. Guys. You wouldn't. You wouldn't sacrifice if they said Aslan, Travis Hunter's having second thoughts. He'll come. Schofield's gone. Schofield's cut. In a heartbeat, gone. right? Gone. Got to be. Got to be. So yeah, I was wondering if he, if you would go to two. If you if if he said two people have to go, if you'd be willing to make that sack, because that's more work for for us. Or hey, I might be the one of the ones you're cutting. It's it's more work for you if you cut two people. But I think you would. Um, you'd probably cut a finger off. Mm. Would you cut a Would you cut a finger off? Uh, no, because we're like, not winning a national title. If we were like that one player away, absolutely. But I mean, we're by the time he's like a junior, Sun Bowl, the Gator be. Bowl. I'm not gonna. So they played. Uh, so co he plays at Collins Hill High School, which is yes. in my neck of the woods up in Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. They played in the Corky Kell Classic in the Mercedes Benz Dome on mm -hmm. Saturday night. The game kicked off at like ten thirty. What are we doing, to these high school kids? But anyway, um, I think they had to wait for an Atlanta United game to be over. So they were playing Brookwood, who's always been a power in Gwinnett County and has a pretty good quarterback of their own. And I think they got they were actually down ten to seven. And anyway, Travis Hunter. Remember, he's he's the he's the number one player in the nation, and he's viewed as a DB, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's his primary position. What were his stats, Aslan? Do you have him in front of you? Thirteen catches, two hundred thirty-two yards, two touchdowns. Also mm -hmm. threw a twenty-one yard touchdown, and he played and defense with four tackles and had a pick and had an interception. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this isn't like he's not playing. Um, you know, 13 for Jeff, 232 and two scores against Brookwood. I, I can't, yeah, I can't stress that he's not playing like the, the Brookwood school in Thomasville, Georgia, the private school that has, you know, 28 kids on their team. This isn't the Jebediah uh, Christian school out of Springfield, Missouri or whatever. Brookwood is a, uh, that, that is a, that has long been a, 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 they're not what they used to be, but that is a real football program with real players that take it very seriously. Um, and for, for to do that against them, and it ain't like they they oh, Travis Hunter plays offense now. It's not like they're not. It's not like they're 13. not game planning for him. He got thirteen balls, man. At some point, thirteen for two thirty two coverage. Yeah, he had he had like a seventy something yard touchdown. Uh, yeah, so you're talking about this is one of those guys. Hmm. This is Absolutely. legitimately yes. Derwin Jalen, one of those guys that is uh, just an electrifying talent. That will be the star, the star of the team the moment he steps foot on the in the program. Um, so yeah, that that was very good news for Florida State fans. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Hey, speaking of his receiving exploits, let's get back a little bit to wide receiver as we wind down here on the show. Everybody keeps asking us about Andrew Parchment. I think we talked a little bit about him at the top of the show. Maybe give people a little bit of a glimpse of what we're seeing out there. Um, again, a lot of the questions that we asked were due to the fact that we can't really talk about the quarterbacks and. I think Kenny. I know Kenny said the offensive line came on pretty well. He thought on Sunday night at the scrimmage, so that's an encouraging thing. I think Norvell said that uh, Robert Scott's been having a tremendous camp. That's a really encouraging thing to hear. At left tackle, right? He yes. said that, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, but wide receiver. So where are we there, Corey? Do we still think this is obviously it's it's not nearly stockpiled as well as you it's been at this university uh, when it's been flying high. Um, and Andrew Parchman has been a big part of why we thought they might be improved or we were hoping they would be improved. Uh, I still don't know how – I mean, if, if somebody had to give me an over-under on catches for Andrew Parchment, man, it would have to be a really obscenely low number for me to, like, hammer the over. Uh, so are we concerned? I'm not uh, because I think, again, this staff will figure out ways to scheme guys to get open. I think Pokey has enough speed uh, to win some one-on-ones and get past guys. We're seeing guys like Kentron Portier make tough, contested catches. So there's guys that are that are stepping up their game that if Parchment isn't what we hoped he would be, they'll be okay, but they're still not going to be nearly as talented as, as we would hope. Uh, but is that going to be a hindrance? Like, Is that going to be something that we're going to be talking about, gnashing our teeth in November about this team, that they still aren't where they need to be at wide receiver? I mean, you got to have Travis Hunter play both ways, don't you? <laughs> I just can't get over those. I mean, yeah. this is, I mean, he might be the number one receiver in the country and the number one DB. Like, this is like Shohei stuff. Mm. Like, 
if you play him solely on defense, you're losing out on literally probably one of the best receivers in the United States. And if you play him on just offense, you're losing out on one of the best corners in the United States. So this is good. It's going to be fascinating, man, what they do with him. He has to play on offense some. Yeah, but just say that he's a defensive back so he can be the first defensive player to win the Heisman since Marcus Woodson, right? Charles Woodson. Not Mar- Charles. See, I did it. Yeah. I, did it. Yeah. I did it. I usually go with Darren or Rod Woodson. Yeah. You went with Charles. A lot of Woodsons out there uh, in the in, that were secondary guys. Strong. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think – I'm telling you, what I saw last week with Kentron, uh, the way they apparently moved the ball, you know, Williamson had some nice plays – um, it didn't sound like they, the receivers had a great scrimmage. Said there were, you know, he said Kentron made a couple big plays, but also had some negative plays, which I assume means drops. Yeah. Parchman had a drop, um, but I think you know what you have in Keyshawn and Pokey, and they are um, solid to maybe even good ACC wide receivers. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not NFL super duper stars, but they're good enough, and they have a role, and they can be tough to guard. They're veterans. You should know what you're getting out of them. The wild cards to me are Malik McLean, Parchment, and uh, Portier. I think those three guys, you're going to have to have two of them, two of those three, step up and become legitimate players for you, legitimate weapons. Um, Parchment probably has the best chance. Parchment hasn't had the best summer so far, but we're also only two weeks in. Um, I would say Portier's been the best out of that bunch. Um, but again, you know, it's, you know, sometimes you can take two steps forward and one step back when you're that age. So we really don't know, but I will say this in the spring until the spring game where they actually had a nice game. I was mortified by what I was seeing from the wide receivers. They were getting abused by the DBs just in one-on-ones and the first two or three days of practice in August, I was like, this might be one of the worst groups in the ACC wide receiver wise. There's nothing that's remotely special about this unit. But, as is usually the case, as the days go by and the practices go by, they've gotten more and more comfortable. They've gotten more and more on rhythm with their quarterbacks. You can't judge them for those first three days, and they're starting to look like a pretty doggone decent unit. Yeah, Yeah, decent, right? Yes. I think they can be decent because they have a bunch of different types of dudes. They they obviously got the, the, the slot guy, the quick guy, and Keyshawn. Um, you know, I, I think Pokey's probably an outside guy, but he's the speed guy. Malik McLean's a tall speed guy. Parchment's the veteran that's made big plays and against good teams in his career um, all over the country he's been. Uh, and then Kentron is the is one of the X factors. Uh, Williamson might be an X factor. So I just, they've all had moments where you're like, okay, I see what's going on here. This could be an okay group, not a terrible group. I wouldn't have said that two weeks ago. And tight so end, I, I, you know, Cam I'm, McDonald's. I'm, feeling, is, I'm a little bare. I'm a little bullish on him. Yeah, and Cam about McDonald's. The wide receivers. It's his time to start stepping up. And if Marquise and Douglas can stay away from the biscuits and remain a tight end, you know, sky's the limit for him. So, uh, encouraging signs for them, nonetheless. All right, we are uh, wrapping up. We're done. Don't forget programming note uh, later on Monday, six o'clock, trench talk with uh, Devontae Love Taylor. Uh, taking all your questions on social media as well as the Tribal Council on WarChant.com. A live show Q&A with Devontae Love-Taylor, presumptive starting offensive lineman for the Florida State Seminoles. What and time? What time is that? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. War Chant TV, right? War Chant TV. That's our YouTube channel. Although, who knows? Maybe Octavia will get us up and running and we'll, we'll be a legitimate television station. You can add program director to your business card, Corey. Mm-hmm. And set the stage for us. Sure. Uh, in the meantime, 1 to 3 p.m., Jeff Cameron, Tom Lang. War Chant TV as well. Also, 93.3 FM airwaves in Tallahassee. So do stay connected to WarChant.com. We'll have a roundtable with Corey, myself, I think, and Ira uh, previewing, I guess, these last two weeks, maybe what we think we know, what we're going to learn. As I far think as Tom, and Jeff, Tom and Jeff are going to be a part of that, too. Okay. It's a big old table. All right. Well, then, yeah. Well, none of, who, just tune in. See who it's going to be. See who it's going to be. That's part of the surprise. It's all going to be there on the YouTube channel. Stay connected to WarChant.com. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thanks so much for listening to Wake Up WarChant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. DeLuna Coffee features over two dozen different blends. DeLuna's unique roasts can be delivered ground finely for drip coffee makers, coarse for the craft crowd, untouched as a whole bean, or even in convenient K-cups. 
founded in 2014 by the Lemmix family, Ed and Brett are FSU alums and boosters who are extending a special offer to all listeners. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. 